Watch dot two. Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, I'll be reacting to one of the early uploads from the YouTube channel The Game Terrorists. This video is um, how's it from two zero one six. That means like five years ago. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of their work and hope that you will enjoy this video as well. So yeah, let's start. It seems like it's pretty much every day that I see or hear about some new life hack. People are just obsessed with shortcuts and MacGyvering the world around them. But a lot of these things just seem to be trivial to me. Use a bobby pin to get that last bit of toothpaste out of the tube. Woohoo! Super exciting. Use a cheese grater to spread butter that hasn't softened. Mind officially blown. Turn the Wi-Fi capabilities on your phone off or someone can steal and erase your whole life in a matter of seconds? Ha! Ah, wait, wh what? Wait, what? what? Wait, what? what? Wow. Welcome to Game Theory. Hello. The show that uses science and math to turn gaming's nublar into the leadest of theorists. And today is an important day. Not only are we returning to one, if not the most infamous multi-part series in game theory history, we're also covering information that will simultaneously terrify and empower you. Making this episode one of the most important ones of the entire series. Ooh, wow, this episode is definitely going dark. Um, view discretion is advised. So sorry. It's no exaggeration, because today we're not talking about hypothetical parallel multiverses or Pokemon evolutionary patterns. We're talking about the real world and the vulnerabilities that increasingly exist in it. It's been two years since our first Watch Underscore Dogs video, and a lot has happened in the world of technology since then. We now exist in a smart world, or at least that's what we like to think. Smart phones, smart cars, smart TVs, smart watches. Heck, everything from your book to your cigarette needs to be plugged in these days. And as tech has evolved around us, we've created for ourselves what's known as an Internet of Things. You know how the Internet is a bunch of connected data? Web pages full of information constantly collecting more, all linking to each other that we have to navigate around? Well, that now exists in a physical form all around us. Everything from your light bulb to your thermostat can be connected to your phone, and that phone is linked to your computer, which also may be linked to your car, an iPod, the printer, the washer. This Internet of Things is a web of connected devices, constantly collecting and sharing information with each other to improve their own efficiency. And that's just one smart home. That home connects to a smart grid, which collectively becomes a smart city, and onward and upward to a smarter world. But you probably see where this is going. On one hand, everything is faster and more convenient. My car and house both know my favorite 90s jock jam playlist because they both talk to my phone. So it'd be efficient, isn't it? When I walk into the house, I don't have to miss a beat of Pump Up the Jam. But this Internet of Things also makes us vulnerable. As the rush to shove technology into everything from the refrigerator to the kitchen sink literally means that- Oh my gosh. So efficiency comes with vulnerabilities. security holes happen. Your car's brakes can be activated remotely. Power grids could be shut down for literally tens of thousands of people. Your house's heat could be cranked up by five extra degrees, making it really uncomfortable for you to sleep at night. And that's our topic for today. Exploring the holes that exist in the world around us and how to exploit them. Why? Well, because one, it's essential for you to be aware of things like that for your own safety, but also two, because it's the world of Watch Dogs 2, where CTOS from the first game has been up upgraded to version 2.0 and is embedded everywhere in this internet of things, collecting behavioral data and then selling it to the highest bidder. I guess there's three reasons, because reason number three is that this video is sponsored by Ubisoft in anticipation of Watch Dogs 2. Hey, Ronnie's gotta eat. So let's talk- 
Hey, Ronnie. About your data. But my data is safe, I hear you saying. And sure, you might take special care of your phone, tablet, computer, and laptop. But what you probably don't worry about is your microwave or your washing machine. The most important technique for anyone doing major hacking jobs is called pivoting. Pivoting is when a hacker gains access to your internet network or server through one machine and then hops to other computers in the same network. If you were a nefarious hacker and you wanted secret company documents, you probably want stuff that's locked down on special secure servers. So why try to fight your way into those when you can hack into something that's totally unprotected instead, like the office thermostat. If the thermostat is connected to the same network as the computers containing the secret information, a hacker can hack the thermostat, then pivot their way to accessing everything else that's on that same internet connection from the inside. No. No. And hacking a thermostat, refrigerator, or even a light bulb, yes, a light bulb, is all becoming possible because people in offices are switching to smart homes, where everything is connected and controlled from where? Oh yeah, your cell phone. So now, every security camera, washer, dryer, thermostat, and light bulb is a gateway into our phones, which at this point basically have our whole lives on them. And to think you didn't even bother to reset the default password on your Alexa. In the creepiest instance of this ever, hackers have gotten into baby monitors. Earlier this year, a family in Washington noticed odd noises coming from their three-year-old son's room, only to discover that the monitor had been hacked and that the hackers were able to watch and talk to their child while they slept. But this is all clearly stuff that's beyond you, right? Sure, pivoting your way from one smart home device to the next is easy in Watch Dogs 2, but that's because it's a game. Well, as it turns out, the reality is that it's shockingly easy to become a hacker. There's even a word for the likes of us, hackers who don't really innovate but are basically just reusing other other people's codes and getting really good mileage out of the copy function. We're called script kitties. So there's a word called scripts. Oh, scripts. <sighs> basically because anyone can do these kinds of hacks. Me, you, cat pat. Cat pat. Cat hat in the Although he would be called a script kitty and he would need to grow some opposable thumbs. Here's a great example of a script kitty. A few years ago, a 15-year-old boy in Austria was arrested for hacking into the website of 259 companies in the span of, get this, three months. 90 days, 259 companies, a 15-year-old. And he did it all by using scripts he found on the internet. It's not that far off from the origin story of Marcus, Watch Dogs 2's main character who got abused by a crooked system and became a self-taught hacker to ensure that no one ever got screwed over like him again. Sure, the most famous hackers out there are real pros who are basically neoing their way through life, but sometimes the vulnerabilities are just there, sitting one Google search away for you to just copy pasta. Now, did the kid get caught? Yeah, of course he did. I mean, I'm talking about him after all. And is a lot of this stuff at best unethical and at worst totally illegal? Yeah, definitely. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. Consider this the theorist seal of do not try this at home. Speaking of easy to do hacks, here's a thought experiment. If you saw this thing right here sitting on your desk at work, what would you do? Would you A, ask around to see if it belongs to anyone, or B, just plug it into your computer and see what it is? No, don't be curious. Curiosity kills the cat. Isn't that what they say? Or maybe it was given to you at, say, E3, coming loaded with all the latest gameplay footage from COD 14, we ran out of ideas. Well, if you answered anything other than C, bash it into a thousand pieces with a hammer, then you answered wrong, my friends, because that innocent-looking thumb drive is what's known as a rubber ducky. Sure, it looks and sounds innocent enough, but this thing is no Sesame Street toy, unless Ernie was trying to steal Bert's identity and drain his bank accounts. Rubber duckies look and work exactly like a typical thumb drive, but also come equipped with teeny tiny processors and SD cards so that computers recognize them as input devices, aka keyboards. If you can do it with a keyboard, then you can program the rubber ducky to do it automatically when it's plugged in, including open web browsers to download programs, search the computer for sensitive files and passwords, or track your keystrokes to follow your every move. We actually tested these things out on the episode of Game Lab I did on hacking, and I can tell you from personal experience, they really work. The hackers who came in for that episode actually 
actually had to program the thing down to slow it to an extent that we could see it working. Even the most complicated maneuvers with a ducky can take seconds. Usually it can execute a program without you seeing it, and definitely not in time for you to stop it. And in those seconds of us using it in Game Lab, it found everything on the computer and pulled it right off. Uploading the files wherever I wanted them to go. An email account, a server. Basically, the information the ducky is stealing isn't on the USB. It's already in an email sent back to the hacker or uploaded to some Google Drive account. But obviously something this powerful must be really hard to get your hands on, right? No, actually. You can buy them online for 40 bucks. Oh wait, no Amazon Prime shipping? Ha, oh, screw that, never mind. Speaking of things that look harmless but can utterly wreck your life, check out the pineapple. The pineapple looks like a harmless router, and your computer or phone can use it as a source of Wi-Fi. Huzzah! But the pineapple is like a Wi-Fi mimic, where it can pretend is a Wi-Fi mimic to be any open wireless network. Think about what that means. If someone has a pineapple in a Starbucks, you think that you're connecting the computer to Starbucks's network, but you're actually connecting to the pineapple and playing right into the hacker's hands. Once your device is connected to the pineapple, it's game over, dude. Any data you send over the network, like passwords and credit card numbers, all go straight to the person operating the pineapple. It's literally as easy as it looks when you're playing the game. And you know why? Because it's inspired by the game. Off camera of that Game Lab episode, the creator told us that she designed the pineapple to create a system where hacking would be as easy as we see in Watch Dogs. And she definitely succeeded. This is called the Wi-Fi pineapple. I just had this little guy running. And who is Jacob's Apple Watch? That is me. <laughs> <laughs> a few clicks and you are caught. Art imitated life, and then life imitated right back. So sure, the tools you need to become a hacker are simple and readily available, but what if you want to do some real damage? A great example of this next level hacking comes straight from the game, from the preview gameplay footage we've seen at E3 of Watch Dogs 2, when our DedSec team wants to manipulate the politics of San Francisco using hacking. It turns out you can totally manipulate political elections and ballot boxes. It was just recently all over the web how vulnerable electronic polling systems are in the U.S. States have lost thousands of votes due to supposed glitches in the systems, most of which are a decade or more old and haven't updated their security protocols in years. This, again, is one of those times when, yeah, it feels unbelievable that just a few button presses can do something like this, but it's not them anymore IRL if you have the right stuff. So if you're not happy with either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump as our next president, well, go ahead, hack the voting stations and make these nuts your next president. Um, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Um... So, um, having said that, right, um, we all know that Donald Trump became the president and thus that yeah, a-hole is gone. Yeah! And the world did not blow up as badly as we thought it would be. So that's no joke, Dee's is a totally legit candidate, and I would what? totally be his VP if he asked. Nuts, Patrick, 2016. At least we know we have the hacker vote. If you want to see something really cool and also really mind-blowing, there are these online maps tracking in real-time attempted hack attacks between countries. This one's called the Norse Attack Map, and it looks like a video game, except it's not. It's expert hackers trying to break into all of our private data every second of every day. Just sit there and watch China to blast out volleys of attacks towards the US. And it seems like everyone is always attacking Dubai for some secret reason that none of us regular people are allowed to know. It's almost hypnotic, but each rainbow-colored blast is just another threat headed our way. In short, what you're witnessing are the most high-stakes battles we fight in the modern age. Nations at war, but not with soldiers on a battlefield. It's a virtual battle of information happening remotely, hacker versus hacker. But that's hacking at a global scale, and as we've seen today, it doesn't need to be nearly that complicated. Watch Dogs 2 is a great example, where one of the game's key features will be these hacker v hacker battles. Just at the local level, rival programmers face to face on the streets of San Francisco trying to outsmart each other. Programmer duels. It's like West Side Story for computer junkies. Maria, I just breached the firewalls of Maria. At this point, you're probably that's not good. Probably thinking we should all be really terrified. And yeah, hacking is serious stuff that's surprisingly close to home and getting easier by the day. So are we doomed to live in a world where computer hackers are the new alpha dogs? Note that this video came out five years ago. Five years ago, technology can improve significantly. Wow. 
or should I say, Alpha Watch Dogs? No, I shouldn't say that. Scary as this episode might make it seem, the answer is actually no. My friends, loyal theorists, hope is on the horizon, and hacking isn't just some tool for the bad guys. There's a growing army of people out there who are working to protect us with just as intense counter hacking. The Guardian Project is a non profit organization devoted to protecting the privacy of people vulnerable to hackers, which, if we're being honest, is basically everyone. Recently, the Guardian Project partnered with Tor, the anonymous network that hosts the deep web servers, to add similar layers of stealth and encryption to smart home devices, basically taking something that's scary to most of us, like the dark web, and turning it into something that makes us all safer. Or just infects everything that we buy and we're just completely oblivious to it. Who knows? But honestly, there's more where that came from. If you want to be a hacker but ain't got time for that prison sentence, well, you can become a white hat hacker, meaning that you basically get paid to hack the biggest companies in the world and tell them where their weaknesses are. Basically, you're being paid by Google to tell them why they suck. They can make their system safer and you can make some serious bank. Facebook and Google will pay out rewards as large as $20,000 to hackers who expose vulnerabilities in their products. There are whole companies who do nothing but penetration testing. And no, they're not just porn companies. They're basically hacking for the good guys, making the world a safer place. Like a superhero who gets rewarded. A what certification? Uh, a what certificate? Presented to Superman for natural apps. Signature. I can't read that. A date just now. Ordered for never having to go to the gym. Funny enough, Marcus and his hacker group DeadSec work the same way, trying to expose the corrupt ways businesses are exploiting the private data being collected by CTOS 2.0 in Watch Underscore Dogs 2. Hackers are out there to help. But to sum up the lessons of this episode, be safe out there. Use a VPN and theorist family. Hacking may be all around you, but knowing about it and knowing the vulnerabilities that exist are the first steps to empowering yourself. In this case, knowledge, truth is power but hey that's just a theory oh, a game theory thanks for watching <laughs> One more special thanks to Ubisoft for sponsoring this video and giving me another excuse to dive into the ever more fascinating, ever more terrifying world of hackers. If you want to learn more about Watch Dogs 2, it's fascinating. Yeah, that's that's true. It is fascinating and terrifying. There's a link in the description right down in there that will lead you directly to their trailer, so click on that. Or if you're interested in seeing how a hacker can break into your car, ATM, or even your heart, that's right, your heart, click right here or right here to check out my first two Watch Dogs videos. Did you know that hackers can even hack planes? From the entertainment center in the back of the seat. I didn't include that in the video because it's just, it's just too scary. I'm already afraid enough of flying. Suffice it to say, though, if it's got... Oh yeah, um, it's true that, um, yes, he, he didn't he didn't joke about when he said that MadPat is afraid of flying. Yes, he actually checked the turbulence, so, yeah. I'm glad that he's being honest about it, so that we know that it's, this kind of situation does happen to us. That, does happen to people. A computer, it can be hacked. And unless you're a hacker at the level of Mr. Robot, there's not a whole lot that we can do about it. Fun times! A real-life scary episode to kick off an October of spooky theories. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got to go analyze the ethics of killing some animals. See you next week. It's dark. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this video. If you do like this video, please consider to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And comment down below if you have anything to share with us. Um, this episode touched on a lot of sensitive topic and... Yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, anyways, thank you so much. The video that I just reacted to, uh, the video that I just reacted to came from the YouTube channel, The Game Theorist. Their videos are very interesting and how say, um, yeah, educational to watch. You should, you should watch it or not, and show support for them as well. But hey, that's just a theory, a game theory. Thanks for watching. A game theory that is too real. Yep, 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 yep. No, no, I'm, I'm ready. 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 ready.
after watching the, 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 the episode, it's like, yep, 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 yep. Time for a break. Let's have a break.